Just like that. <laughs> <laughs> So, finally, after 15 years, 26 countries and three continents, it's time for us to say goodbye to Matilda. She served us well, she's taken us to the Sahara, she's taken us to the Arctic Circle, and quite a few places in between. For any of you that have been following, you'll know what she's uh, capable of. Um, with over 2,000 subscribers on YouTube and thousands of hits on the website, uh, each day. Chances are this is one of, if not the most uh, famous discoveries in the world. Um, it certainly has had its ups and downs. Anyway, it's now time to uh, put her up for sale. Um, we've given her a good clean out. Um, in this set of videos, I intend to run you through the entire vehicle and show you all of the ins and outs uh, of what it is that you might be interested in buying. Hopefully you'll find it informative. Okay, looking at the car from this side. Um, as probably many of you are aware, fitted with a, a Mantec snorkel that's plumbed in. Um, and we've certainly driven this in Iceland. We've had it with, with water coming over the bonnet and not had any issues at all. <coughs> the safety device is roof rack. Um, uh, extensively modified uh, over time because originally we had the roof tent. Unfortunately the roof tent is going to stay with us uh, so it won't be sold with the vehicle. Uh, the Hannibal awning, which you'll see on the other video just how easy that is, um, with a full set of si sides to go with it, um, three sides, uh, and they're kept uh, on the back shelf uh, in, the, in the boot. Um, waffle boards, uh, strap down on the top here. One of the advantages of mounting the waffle boards up here is it does actually then give you a completely level platform. The two waffle boards that are here, 38 millimeter um, strong boards, will certainly uh, go with the vehicle. At the back is a direct 4x4 awning that uh, goes out, extends out, and there is also a tent that fits underneath that that will be included with the vehicle and it's hopefully I will put a video to show you that tent if not you can just search online to be able to find it, it gives you a 1.4 by 2 meter long tent certainly enough to be able to put a camp bed in and be able to sleep in the back but also allows access into the back of the vehicle other things on uh, the side here is we mounted various uh, little brackets for GoPro uh, they're all just stuck on if you don't want to use them then they can just come off but otherwise you've actually got a mount on the winch uh, there's one in the center and one either side of the uh, uh, windscreen one on the wing mirror one mounted on the side pillar here it allows you to just click your GoPro anywhere or other action camera anywhere around the camera uh, uh, car and get uh, different views okay now one of the main things that that makes this car this discovery unique compared to any other uh, and I've only ever seen one other car with something similar which was a, a prototype I saw at the a Land Rover owner show 
several years ago. And that's the hatches. <coughs> These make the rear load space phenomenally flexible and accessible. Um, you will also see uh, that later in the video where I show you the contents and how these are kitted out. But this does make this a truly unique discovery. The, I mentioned the snorkel earlier, also on the inside here, difficult to see, is the fact that the axle breathers are also raised uh, to keep us uh, protected in deep water. On the side here, purpose-made steel rock sliders that are actually bolted to the chassis not to the sills, which means that when you open the doors, you can actually see the sills, you can clean them, you can get to them, you're not going to get build up with mud, but also they're fully protected. On top of here is also non-slip matting, uh, so that you can stand up to get to the roof rack and uh, also climb in and out of the vehicle. Climb air, wind protectors on here, we fitted these because we enjoy driving along with the windows open, especially when we're driving through foreign towns, get the sounds and the smells of uh, the countries. Um, these you can quite comfortably drive up to about 40 miles an hour with the window open and you don't get massive amounts of uh, noise uh, and draft coming in. Of course the car is, because it was an ES spec disco, the car is actually fitted with air conditioning um, so if it gets too hot and stifling, you can actually then put the windows up and uh, put the AC on. Under the car, there is a uh, steering guard, full steel steering guard at the front and mesh to um, protect the uh, full width Allard intercooler that's mounted on there. Steel bull bar, <coughs> welded and mounted onto what was originally a uh, uh, famous 4x4 winch bumper and a Supermax uh, S9 winch, um, uh, which we have used uh, at times. Uh, fortunately, most of the time to pull somebody else out rather than ourselves. Two Hella 3000 uh, long range driving lamps. So they are just wired directly through a relay to come on with the main beam. Okay, now let's have a look at the other side. On this side of the vehicle, obviously pretty much similar. One of the things I didn't mention is that the rock siders are fitted with uh, high lift jack 90, uh, the tubular jack converter, so you can use the high lift jack on them, as is the front, and there is the uh, two inch receiver hitch on the back, which allows you to use the high lift on the jack on the back as well. Sticking with the uh, theme of the high lift, on the front here is your holster for the high lift. Um, fairly easy, keeps it quite well protected um, in there uh, and lashed it. We put a bag over the end just to add a little bit of protection, but here you can see how easily that just goes in and then we simply lock it off with a, a strap. and that isn't going anywhere. Also on here with the grip fist, we've got the shovel. Um, again, been used several times, been replaced, repaired several times. Um, that'll be going with the car. As per the other side, GoPro mounts on here and on here. One thing I will talk about though is the lighting. Uh, on the top, there are two sets. They're actually Freelander uh, Safari 3000 lights the two centre ones are long range driving lights, the two outer ones are fog lights. They point downwards, they point in front of the car, the fog lights give a nice weave and spread, the spotlights give a nice tight spread, and, what, and between them they allow you to drive uh, quite comfortably and see what's ahead of you off road at night. The only downside is I did wire them all up through relays, uh, but once we'd rejigged the car and rebuilt all the back, and never got around to actually uh, rewiring them and fitting them back up so they work. All the switches are in the cab, all the wiring and the switch wiring all runs back to the rear hatch um, and that's how it will remain. So whoever buys the vehicle has the opportunity to be able to fit them and make those work. 
but like I say, all the wiring goes to the back there and there is a junction box there for it. Okay, before we start on the inside, just to touch on the outside of the car. Uh, so on the back here, this is a brand new uh, Goodyear Wrangler MTR, uh, never actually been used. It was the spare we took to Asia with us uh, and had a blowout, it was on the roof. Um, there's no fitted on here, so this has never actually been new, brand new. Just looking at the back of the car, as far as you can see, you see we've got a two inch receiver hitch here, which comes with uh, a recovery socket that will come with the car. It also has a uh, little safety bar on the bottom there for uh, pulling on the brakes and anything on the trailer. Underneath, you can see the long range fuel tanks. Um, all in there gives a total of 170 odd litres, uh, which gives this a range mileage of about 700, 800 miles or so when she's fully loaded. Um, probably even get a bit further than that. We actually did manage to get all the way from Tunisia to, uh, to Norfolk uh, on one tank full during the uh, fuel strikes. Landed to get on the reef, and although you can't quite see it on the video, I'll show you later, there is an awning up on the top here, which also has a tent that goes underneath it, that encloses fully on the back. Okay, uh, oh, we're getting two twin sockets uh, put up here to keep them nice and high out of the way, so you've got a standard uh, tow socket, and you've also got the uh, second caravan uh, charging socket, all on there, all nicely covered. Opening up the inside. Some of you will be familiar with how the uh, car was set up before, so a lot of it is very, very similar, um, but there have been some fundamental changes in the way we've done things. Originally, we had to pull out really useful boxes, which we lifted up on the floor. If only we were good, but we often had to difficulty in where we put them. So now all of the boxes have been put onto uh, runners, which will come out, and if we weren't on a hill, do stay out, you can then access directly lids will just slide on the back so you've got nice access to get into everything. We've all got reinforced bottoms to take the extra weight. And here in these bottom two we used to keep all our food stuffs. So on this side 50 litres and 50 litres. Second drawer this is where we used to keep uh, and you can see they're still there all of our kitchen appliances. And the top 33 meter drawer. It's again, all of our kitchen tills, cutlery, crockery, everything used to go in there. So for the rear drop down shelf, we used to have a pop out sink, like so, drop this down, and we would have our running water straight into there. Top of that. Up on the top here is a belt buckle class cooker. And down. The hose fits on the back door. And quick connect. So we had our 
cooker, ready to go, sink, ready by the side, or alternatively, that would be out of the way, this would be a working area. We also used to use this as a washing area as well. Plenty of area to be able to work on. Okay. Nice and neat. Tight down the line. And everything is securely tight down. We also have a bottle opener on here. We have a magnetic strip, which is useful for, uh, for knives, teaspoons, etc. Fire extinguisher, and this is where the uh, backlight used to go. Torch. Up here, space for kitchen rolls, uh, which we used. Just pull them off. Whatever you want to do, we've got them handy. Fridge, unfortunately the fridge isn't going with the car when we sell it, uh, as we'll be using that. Um, but on the drop side, quite tall, so unlock, press the release. The whole fridge just slides out, lock it, and it just drops down. From here, it's very easy to access the fridge and freezer. Um, this uh, has its own dedicated plug. So it plugs into both mains and the 12 volt. So as soon as we go on to mains hookup, it immediately changes over. This is full of tins at the moment. And you can see, very easy to do this. So let's actually lock it off and take it away. Kitchen table, always an awkward thing, so we've built a proper slot here. This table will go with the car, and you can see from here, just simply boot them out. And you've got your kitchen table, or dining table. Lock it away, straight forward, and that just slips straight back. In there, completely out of the way. Up the top here is a really large storage space, but quite restricted in its access. So, it has two little clasping bolts, pop those in, that gives us access there. Up here, we keep um, this is the uh, tent which uh, goes underneath this awning. So, you can see quite a big package there. We also have our camp chairs up here. Um, awning sides for the hand of awning, um, the toilet pop up tent we kept up here, quite a few bits and pieces we kept up on the top. Of it. it really is quite a large, useful space, but it's really only good for lightweight stuff. This thing just goes up, locks back, and you don't have to worry about anything coming out. That just about sums up the, uh, the back of the car. Now yeah, we'll have a look at the side hatches. On the passenger side, this hatch was specifically uh, kitted out so that it allows to do tea side, uh, roadside tea stops for cups of tea and short breaks. So apart from being able to show the 26 countries that Matilda's already been to, which also covers the three continents, the hatch is lockable. Simply pop this up. It's got a full automotive seal around it, and we've driven through some pretty severe weather. Uh, we haven't encountered any leakage in here at all, although you get a little bit of drips through the top here. Firstly, we have the LED light. 
we actually find this is this is quite powerful enough to be able to sit here uh, and uh, set the table out and, and have a meal. When you first, uh, it also I should say it also swivels inwards, yeah, so you can actually see inside the the, the cupboard as well. First thing you see when you come in here is this little table. This was uh, specifically modified so that you simply drop these down. There's two locators in here with the screws. Drop this into here and the legs stop it moving and you've got a little place to make your, your tea and your coffee. In here, kitted out, we have the jet boil and the gas bottle. These will just come down. We have the cups up the top, um, which are used, wine glasses, uh, all clipped in. Here we have two three litre really useful boxes. This used to have the tea, coffee, tea bags, sugar, sweetener, these kind of things. Also one used to have all the sauces, uh, tomato ketchup, etc. And here was the um, breakfast cereals. All of these are secured down, so nicely secured, so that they're not going to uh, leak the boat, cause problems, and fall out. Can't make tea without water, so we have another tap here, plumbed in to the same system, so we've got fresh water on tap, um, just by the side there, whenever we need it. The switch for operating that is inside the car, and is the same as, as the back for the pump. Taking these out of the way. Allows you to be able to see in here we have the Anderson plug, which is uh, specifically on a, a much higher ampage circuitry to allow for plugging in the compressor. 12 volt socket here, and then three 24 volt, uh, 240 volt sockets specifically for when we're on mains hookup. On this side, we have the uh, CTEC mains battery charger, and we also have the changeover switch which uh, links the rear battery to the front battery or alternates between them so you can charge any of the three batteries and you can draw power from any of the three batteries. Here we had a couple of little clips which we just kept uh, mosquito repellent in and also a little hand gel. In addition, difficult to see, uh, here is an additional gas outlet so the idea being that whichever way the wind direction is, we could actually set the cooker up here in the lee of the car. If we couldn't use the back. And we just plug in here, connect it at the other end, plug it in here, and the hose is already running. So we can cook on this side, on the tailgate, or around the other side, depending on which is the best one for wind direction. Okay. Everything goes back. Easily in there. This just we used to put a tea towel on this just to stop it wrapping. Sits on the top there. Close it down. Lock it. Down. Going back to having all the boxes. So one of the things is there's a massive amount of space under here. So we fitted these Zeus fasteners. And from here, this lifts out, and there's a large storage access area here, which is where spare parts, we keep a lot of the spares tucked in here, oil filters, etc. There'll be a full list attached to it. And it also gives access to the um, third battery, which is a uh, 100 amp uh, Numax um, CVX, 27 CVX battery. We often find it's the little things that make life convenient. This is a, a Land Rover Curry hook fitted on here. Seems a bit obscure, but it's specifically there so we can hang rubbish bags on uh, when, we're dry, when we're at the kitchen or when we're at the hatch. It just gives us somewhere to hang. So all these little details are what makes using this vehicle really, really convenient uh, and uh, well, comfortable. On the outside here, on the passenger side, is the covered locking cap for the water tank, 70 litre fresh water capacity that runs through the two taps in the hatch and to the back 
and also to the shower on the driver's side. Okay, starting on the outside, opposite the uh, water filler, here we have the standard mains plug. This will allow you to go straight onto main hook up, any campsite, anywhere. It immediately powers the fridge, but also gives you, uh, starts charging the batteries with the mains top up, and also gives you the three sockets on the other side uh, for powering any 240 volt appliances you may want. Hatch opens exactly the same as the other side and has the same key, um, which makes life convenient. On the inside, a similar kind of layout for we had the, uh, the, the light again, which uh, rotates. On this side, we have a heavier duty kit. Uh, so, um, Everything once again hooked down. This was where we kept the T Max compressor. We also kept a bow saw here, axe. These are the levelers for the wheels, and at the back there is the extension for the jack handle. In this side, we've got a triangle, emergency triangle, and space for two uh, Caligas 907 bottles. We always carry two, um, principle being that once one is empty you know you're halfway through. Uh, the regulator sits on top and there's one below, one on top. Okay. In here is also an extension lead, just allows us to run the gas further around. Okay. And another lead here, and this is the one that feeds the uh, gas quick connect on the other side. So by simply disconnecting here on the regulator, connecting it to that, we immediately get gas around to the other side. So we've got the option of cooking at the back, just out here by connecting into here and down by the side, or on the other side, depending on which way the wind is and the wind along. Under here, we have the same concept as the other side. This lifts off. And we have a massive storage space. In this case here, we kept some, uh, again, filters, other bits and pieces, but we also kept the recovery equipment, struts, the jack, um, the uh, wheel brace, um, spare water hoses, things really awkward shape that we could just fit down inside here, keep them nicely out of the way. Mainly in here because if I wanted to, if I'm going to use the jack, then the chances are I'm going to use the compressor anyway. So getting the compressor out of the way, just getting that one thing out of the way, means we've got easy access. Similar to the other side, Anderson plug wired in directly for the compressor. 12 volt socket. Uh, little, there's a few little spaces and other bits and pieces that you can find to store things. Um, but uh, fundamentally, that's this storage locker complete. The junction box on this side was aimed at wiring all of the roof lights. To be honest, that was a job they did use to work. I never got round to actually uh, rewiring them and putting them back in. So consequently, that's uh, on the to-do list. In the back of the car, we fundamentally changed our whole concept of the way we carried our clothing. Originally, we had pull-out boxes, uh, and we found these were quite good, but also limiting as well, and also prevented us from reclining the chairs, uh, and generally didn't make the vehicle particularly practical when we weren't on expedition. So instead, we've replaced this whole area now with this load cargo bay area. The cargo rails, that are now have these adjustable um, stops that can fit in effectively anywhere. Um, and we used two uh, 100 litre Thule um, luggage bags, which we put in here and were skewered down and they fitted across this way. And then my camera equipment sat in the center. 
it gave us an awful lot more flexibility. And ideally, now when you go shopping at Tesco's or Asda, you've got somewhere to put your shop in for the rest of the time. On the far side, underneath the cover, is the 70 litre fresh water tank and the water pump. Screws just simply hold that down. If you ever need to get into it for maintenance, it just simply pops off and you can get inside. This side here is all storage. Once again, using the Zeus fasteners, undo this, this lifts off and gives us access to a really, really large area. Here we've got our stools, toilet stools, uh, spares. I used to keep 10 litres of uh, engine oil in here in a container. In this little area here, you can see lots of little electrical knickknacks and bits and pieces, wipe, spare wipers, WD-40, all sorts of extra bit of kit. This is a really, really large storage space. Nice and low down, ideal for keeping most of your bigger spares, air filters, these kind of things that wouldn't fit in the hatch go in here. Um, and, and some of your heavier things. Lots of tools. The main tool bag went in here uh, and I used to keep a small, easy, accessible tool roll on the floor with some just sort of basic tools for handy when I needed them. See that just goes back in. Put it in, twist. Lock it down, completely flat storage area. The uh, Recaro seats recline forward and back, so again, make it nice and easy. So, as you can see, fairly standard 300 TDI layout. A couple of interesting points um, to identify in here. Lead lined engine blanket just to keep the noise down. All of the hoses, all the air hoses have all been replaced with silicon uh, for extra performance, although it's all a relative term. Linked in with that there is a uh, improved intercooler mounted in this side. There's also a full width Allard stage 2 intercooler below the radiator. Fuel pump has been tweaked to give the maximum month that you can get out of one of these, which considering the all-up weight of the car, the performance isn't actually bad. It'll sit and cruise 50, 60, even 70 miles an hour. We've actually pushed it even up to 80 on some of the foreign motorways when we were in a hurry. It doesn't like it, but it will sit there um, and it just chewed the miles up. Um, however, a bit sluggish on hills, um, but it will get you there. Okay, modifications made in here. Air box has been moved, and uh, there's a, a Mantec raised air intake on this side, which has got all this uh, ducting here for a 200 TDI. But I moved the air box so I can keep the standard 300 TDI air filters running it through here over the side, which would run up to the air intake. That's all fully sealed. That allowed me to clear up this battery compartment here. So this battery it mainly works as an auxiliary battery and is fed um, through the uh, from the rear one and is selectable from there. Wired into here through an isolation key isolation switch and the key is kept inside is the uh, the front super winch S9 um, 9,000 pound uh, winch on the front. Okay, moving around to this side. Modifications that we made here is we've got the CTEC charging system. Um, this will link into a solar panel, which we used to have on the roof tent, um, that then uh, draws from the alternator, the solar panel, and also links in with 240 volts, so that at any given time, we've got basically three different ways of charging the batteries and distributing the charge between them. The two front batteries are linked by a X-Eng uh, manual split charge system. So I can actually select that from inside at any time if I want to join these together. Yeah, um, and in fact, that actually allows me to join all three batteries together if the, the rear switch is done. So the electrical system allows for a multitude of, of uh, combinations of drawing power uh, from different places. Um, 
but also allows you to completely isolate the starter battery uh, and not draw any power from that if you don't want to when you're parked up. At the back here is the cruise control that operates off a stalk of the uh, steering column. Um, interestingly, it has uh, not only the facility to lock whatever speed you, you dial it in at, but also it has two memories. I tend to have them set at 56 miles an hour and 62 miles an hour, which is 100k for when you're cruising on the continent. 56 is a lovely cruising speed, reasonable fuel consumption, the best you'll probably get with this. Uh, quiet, comfortable. If we want to make a little bit of progress, we tend to up it just to 60. And the two little buttons allow me to just switch between them quite easily. Minor things is that where we used to have the veg oil system, there are now uh, additional filters in line with the, uh, the fuel. So you can actually see and make sure you're getting fuel to, through to the engine. But it also adds a little bit of extra protection for the, for the lift pump uh, and for the, uh, for the injection pump. Okay, on the inside of the car, fairly standard discovery layout. Modifications that have been made since we uh, uh, took over the car. We've added these two Brodit clips. They'll be remaining. Um, and basically this allows you to mount your um, iPhones, Android phones, whatever, onto here. And down below you've got two, um, two USBs this side two USBs that side allows you to charge your phone or tablet as you go along. With regard to the tablet mounted on the top here is a RAM ball mount uh, and we used an extending arm and had our uh, large full the 10 inch iPad up here which gave us our uh, navigation uh, using View Ranger, uh, Copilot or any other software that you, you want to use. Um, <coughs> Under the centre console here, we have uh, gauges for um, it's, uh, um, for exhaust gas temperature, for water temperature, oil temperature, and oil pressure. Um, not sure you can see them in the video. I'll show some close-ups. Um, these are uh, clearly work. Really give you a good indication of what's going on with the uh, with the engine. Uh, Kenwood stereo, um, if I say so myself, I've put some effort into the speakers. There are um, two speakers in the door, there are two subwoofer, subwoofer based combined speakers in the back, um, and you've got small tweeters um, in each of here. The sound system in this car is, is mind blowing. Uh, well, it is for me, I mean, I suppose for a real audio file, it's probably not good enough, but for what we want, it's quite superb. The head unit links through to an iPhone, um, the USB point which is inside the glove box so you can, uh, we used to have a, an iPod, uh, just an old one we bought off eBay, 30 gigabyte iPod, used to sit in there and just used to shuffle all our music around. It's also full Bluetooth so you can just Bluetooth your um, uh, phone to it and play your music through the speakers um, and it's also a hands-free phone kit. Um, little microphone just uh, in here um, and uh, works really well, plays through the, the car speakers. Um, Disco 2 cup holders fitted in here. We found these to be very, very practical, really useful to have them in uh, where they are and it's an ideal location. Um, extra switches, now these aren't wired in. Um, they were originally wired in, they worked, but since modifying some things, um, uh, haven't managed to get around to getting them done um, but all the wiring runs from this um, up to the front fog lights so you've got the inner the outer and then there was the rear work light which is on the back of the car um, all the wiring runs through to a junction box which is in one of the rear hatches um, uh, so you can quite easily all, add some relays, add some junctions and you should be able to wire those in really quite straightforward without having to mess around with, with wiring cables. Uh, these switches here uh, are actually redundant now. Uh, they were with the original veg oil kit. I've just left them there because they look neater than having a big hole in the dash panel. Uh, but I do have a replacement uh, panel for this somewhere which hopefully I'll dig out and blank them off. But, as so I say, you can always get different um, 
covers for these and use them for, for other functions if you want to. Um, diff lock, four wheel drive, everything on this car works uh, really well. Auto gearbox, very smooth, never had any issues with it apart from um, in Tunisia and on the last trip we did into Greece, um, it does get hot. Um, uh, and I always was going to modify the radiator to get some airflow through but it was only in really extreme circumstances we were driving very slowly, we're driving through the desert or we're doing really steep inclines uh, we found I'd often get the warning light on pull over, give it 5 or 10 minutes um, cool down and you can carry on but never ever had a, a real issue with the gearbox up on the dash panel here we've got our um, GoPro fixing, uh, silver compass which is calibrated so it, it, it does, does work with all the electronics um, and this was just a cheapo um, telephone mount, expanded one but we used that for our spot tracker. Um, one of the biggest mods I made was this overhead console. Um, I found that the original console was just too narrow, we could put uh, maps and things in but not an awful lot else. So I modified this, this console, um, one switch up here for the sunroof uh, because the, the front one doesn't work, yeah, be honest it doesn't work, the rear one does, gives you a little bit of ventilation when, when you need to. Um, it's all pre-wired through with a control lever here to, uh, to run a, a VHF and the VHF ICOM unit that I've got is, uh, uh, could go with the car, um, just depends on a, a bit of negotiation. Um, this is the, the handset whoops, uh, handset for the ICOM unit down there um, and the display panel goes up here it just velcroed on uh, which is why this is done with carpet uh, along the top here really quite large shelves now uh, all carpeted so you can just velcro anything you want and on this side I used to have all my battery camera batteries uh, all just velcroed on there uh, all just Amazon uh, uh, batteries and there is power up here to plug all of them in um, so you can run them uh, uh, and keep all your batteries in your car so you can just swap out for your GoPros for your whatever uh, basically. Um, because I modified this we've obviously lost the overhead light so I've added in these little bendy map lights um, which we have one on each side gives us uh, sometimes need to jiggle um, gives us two little map reading lights which are, are controllable in here um, and what that also means is up the top here on either side there are two 12 volt sockets as well um, so you've got power up here for battery charging and you've got two 12 volt sockets if you want to plug any other accessories in uh, 80 channel CB radio up here um, that'll stay with the car, that's all fixed in, nice and easy to operate uh, up here. Uh, oh, one other thing, split charge system, uh, may have already covered, it's got three batteries, so there's two in the front, one in the rear. Um, it's a manual split charge, if you want to join the two front batteries together, there's a, a, a switch down here under the, under the dashboard um, that, will, uh, that, that operates the, the relay. I always found that was just better than automatic. It's easy enough to put an automatic switch in, um, but I prefer to have the manual uh, switch there for the um, uh, for the split charge. Uh, electric mirrors all work. You yeah, may not be able to see it. Oh yes, you can if I duck out of the way. Up here is a uh, National Lunar uh, battery uh, display that shows the indications for the two front batteries, left and right. Uh, so it gives you an idea what what level of charge you're at. A um, couple of things that were on the to-do list, um, never got back around to reinstalling sun visors uh, and you do need them. Um, my plan was to just get the Defender flat ones um, and actually just screw these up into uh, uh, the wood here uh, and that would give me the sun visors uh, and also I intended to get another set of Defender ones which I was going to put on the side so that you can actually have a sun visor at the front and at the side at the same time. Uh, Defender ones you can pick up from eBay quite cheaply um, and that uh, was the best, we, we found one of the, the, the best ideas. It was one of those round to it, but something for the new owner to play with. Um, 
Other thing I've just noticed, because I'm not doing this with a script, uh, Koei hook mounted on the door there. Um, we found that really handy for just hanging a, a little carrier bag on for just rubbish as we're driving along, uh, sweet wrappers, anything else. Um, just have it hanging there and it's, it's nicely tucked out of the way. Um, car was all fully serviced um, and uh, we, we had a problem with some en engine oil leak but uh, uh, that was all been uh, fixed and the seals were all done. Engine runs really smoothly. Uh, air conditioning um, was recharged before we went to Greece. Um, so that's all running really well. Oh, and I think uh, that's about it for the, the sort of main dashboard uh, arrangement here. Uh, 208,000 miles, um, but that's on two engines. Um, and I honestly cannot remember. It is in the blog when we changed over the engines. Um, but the new engine has, has not caused us any problems at all um, and has, has now done tens of thousands of miles. Uh, certainly Greece, Turkey uh, to Asia was done on it. Um, actually thinking about it, all our overland trips have been done on the new engine. So that's Tunisia, Midnight, Circle, uh, Midnight Sun, Iceland um, and to Asia. Um, so it's, it's no problems with that engine whatsoever. One of the biggest modifications really we made was to upgrade the seating. The original Discovery seats were very poor and the driver's seat went. And if you followed the blog you'll know that originally I installed um, Range Rover uh, Classic seats which lasted us very well, they were very good, um, but eventually they started to go as well. So we decided to uh, uh, really upgrade and give us a good level of comfort. When you're traveling mile after mile, being able to sit comfortably in the car is a, is a real priority. So we fitted uh, these Recaro ErgoMed seats. These are uh, the top of the range Recaro seat, uh, fully adjustable. I got them from an eBay supplier in Germany, uh, reconditioned units. Um, and there's uh, nearly 1,500 pounds worth of seats here. Uh, new, they're close to 1,000 pounds each. They are phenomenally comfortable. Um, I drove all the way through Europe, uh, uh, into Greece, through across into Asia, down through Turkey, back up again, um, probably adjusted the seat once in that whole time. Uh, once you're in them, you, they just swallow you up. They are so comfortable, it's untrue. Um, and really are a, a, a touch of luxury. They're completely adjustable. Um, so and they're all electric uh, so you can see um, you've got the back support um, the uh, base uh, is height adjustable at the front um, and height adjustable at the back you also have two different uh, lumbar supports um, which uh, pump up at, at different levels um, meaning basically if you can't make this seat fit you are a strange person uh, one other huge advantage they have is that these actually like two doors tilt forward um, which makes it an awful lot easier for accessing anything in the back here uh, when we wanted to uh, pockets on the back as well um, so uh, these oh i meant to mention uh, obviously adjustable headrests and also the seat squab adjusts here so you can get extra leg length in there if, you went, if you've got longer thighs. Um, really seriously comfortable and truth be known, I mean, we've gone over now to a, a Ford Ranger, uh, they're not a patch, the seats in there are not a patch on, on what we've got here uh, and I would really love to be able to swap these over. Uh, and really that's probably it for the um, uh, for the interior.
So there you have it. If you've stayed till the end, then you've done well. I've tried to put together a video that's as comprehensive as possible and shows you all the modifications and how easy it is to live with this vehicle. Truth is, it's only by time with it can you see how convenient we've made it and all those little tweaks and changes to make life far more comfortable on the road. I don't want to sell her. It's, uh, she's been such a major part of our life for so long. She's given us so many highs and lows, uh, had taken us on some great adventures and, and left us with stories that we'll have for the rest of our lives. However, it's time for her to go on, hopefully to a new owner that can build on those stories and take her even further or revisit some of the places uh, and even get to some of the places that we never quite managed. There are many modifications on the vehicle that even I've forgotten that I've done. So there are other bits and pieces uh, that you will find. There are uh, odd uh, spares. There's, there's things like an extra set of springs for the rear, medium rate instead of the heavy duty. Um, there are lots of bits and pieces, nicks and nacks, things that will go with the vehicle um, that won't even be on the list. Um, just things that I can't even remember. But we will put it together in such a way that this, if you just add some cooking material, your beds, recovery equipment and some tools, you could basically take this vehicle to North Africa um, without any problems at all. Uh, we've tried to keep it as a package so that she can go on giving people adventures. The blog has been running since 2009 and there are write-ups on there for the vast majority of the modifications. Um, there are the stories on there of where we've traveled, the things that have gone wrong, the things that we've put right, uh, and everything that this car has, has given us for the last uh, nine years. She's not perfect. She's a 22 year old Land Rover and she has suffered at my hands some quite uh, amazing abuse over the time and any new owner needs to take that into account. This is not a vehicle you get from a showroom. She's done over 200,000 miles and a good 25 to 30% of those were driven during overland expeditions. She started off life as my uh, daily vehicle um, she became my off-road toy. She was used as a 4x4 response vehicle long before we updated her for overlanding. If you're interested in Matilda or you want to ask any questions, you can contact me through the Overland Rovers Facebook page and I'll try and answer any of the questions. I should be posting a price and writing more details including a spares list and any other information I can think of in the blog on the website and I shall be advertising her in, in a variety of different places. I really would like her to go to an owner that's going to continue taking her on adventures and maybe even take her further than, than we ever did. I hope you found this informative and interesting. Thank you for watching.